I think the first thing you need to do as a storyteller is engage. Your audience needs to be engaged, they need to be entertained. When you talk about representation, it also involves um, respecting the lived experience of the people that you are telling the stories because it should come from a place of education and empathy. I mean, I remember um, talking about joining the industry 20 years ago, yeah. walking onto set as a third AD and it was daunting. For so many decades, even like forms of cinema, of storytelling, popular culture actually have really been defined, you know, defined and designed and really created by men. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us on The Quint. I have to ask you guys, when you guys made season one, did you ever think and the anticipation of season two would be as much as it is today? Because I remember reading a meme that said, Yaar, itna to maine apni date ke bhi nahi kiya. <laughs> you know, that's how much people love it. Did you guys expect that kind of response? When you put something out that like, hasn't really, uh, has no paradigm before it. Um, this is kind of new in terms of its format. It's kind of new in terms of its lead characters. We didn't know how it would land. We just knew we liked it. We just knew we wanted to say these things. You, you just hope it lands well. And uh, it was overwhelming, the response we got. But again, you're putting season two out and you just want to not disappoint and hope it, you know, it, it, the people that love it, uh, like this one. Also. You know, I yeah. love that people loved it, yeah. but that is putting a lot of pressure yeah. on us right now. <laughs> I <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah. Huge. What's the one thing that you find most exciting about season two in comparison to season one? I think for me, it's definitely that we've dug deeper into the characters and the themes. You come in with a lot more experience this time around, so you also have that, that okay, fine, these things did work. At least I felt a lot more confident this time yeah. about the, the choices that we were making. It's bigger in scale and it's grander and it's got scaled up weddings, it's got uh, bigger faces and cameos. And But I think what is, uh, uh, what for me is thing is it, it's more soul. Uh, it's deeper, it's more layered and uh, it's um, it's more delicate for the characters. It's, it's more painful and, uh, for the characters and I, I, I find that uh, very gratifying and I hope that connects. I mean, as a fan, if I see it, uh, I feel this season is more, uh, it's so, so much so, like Zoya said, that word, uh, that it also is not shying away from looking within. There's so many things that we've covered and so many things that are coming from a lot of hard work and a lot of understanding and empathy. Uh, they're not superficial, they're not, I mean, not that season one was not, but here you see that we've gone a, one step ahead. Also, the, the good thing about season two, because this is the first season two for yeah. me at least, I mean, I think for all of us, is the fact that, you know, in, in, whenever you start something, there's always a setup. You yeah. have to explain a lot about where the characters come from. This yeah. So half that job is already done. You can really, really go in deeper this time around because a lot of that initial thing is done within the writing and has been seen and appreciated. Yeah. You know, I mean, all of you collectively, whenever there's something that comes in, your names are attached to it, there's always a sense of that this film or this show is going to show us a reflection of our society and the times we live in, right? It'll entertain us and at the same time, it's also going to educate us. As filmmakers, you know, what do you think is the responsibility for people, for storytellers today? I mean, me personally, more than trying to educate, I'm trying to be relevant. Right. You know, it's I'm not trying to teach anyone anything, but just right. explore real things around me in our work. I don't think that we can pontificate or get on any pulpit and preach. And I think it's also very boring for an audience. Yeah. I think the first thing you need to do as a storyteller is engage. Your audience needs to be engaged. They need to be entertained. And as anybody who wants to uh, basically better their craft or become a better artist, it's impossible to do that in a vacuum. You have to be relevant to uh, to what to your life, to the context, to where you are. And uh, only if you can take that entertainment and have characters in it that are believable and they connect with someone in that audience having that experience. They're reflected, they're represented, they, uh, their lives are made sense of on some level. Uh, will there be something that lasts? I feel that we, we're not in the job to like educate people, but I think we present arguments or we present reality and let people react to it. Because, you know, there, there can be multiple perspectives on one particular thing. So I think it just to, I mean, my pension would be to just like an, as, an, as an artist, I would want to put out things, but not make strong opinions about anything. They leave the audience with something to think about or reflect on what they see ahead of us, right? 
But and I mean, there are some things that we are very uh, yeah. uh, clear on where which side of the fence we fall. Yeah. <laughs> With I women, exactly. we are very yeah. clear. Yeah. 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 I think a worldview as a filmmaker will always come through in one's work. I yeah. sometimes yeah. feel that, I think like what Neeraj was saying, the idea of looking within, I think the ideas to question ourselves as to where we stand, who we are, how do we feel. And I feel it's very hard to hide who you truly are in terms of your work. Yeah, in whatever story you tell, yeah. your value system will reflect. Yeah. And who are we at the end of the day? Like, you know, I, I've been thinking about this a lot because the word inclusive comes in a lot. We're so inclusive. But I just feel like sitting here, like, I can't be that. Like, I'm not anybody to tell, to include you into sure. my life. I yeah. think it's just about visibility, representation. Of course, all those things matter. I think our films reveal about us more than we do. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reflection of the society and all of you. Yeah. And I don't think it's yeah, them be like, well, yeah. let's do this that's and it's be inclusive about this. As, I think it's yeah. just uh, who you audience. are comes through. Yeah. Right. And anybody, you know, reacting to a show or a movie, uh, their reaction is also revealing something about them yeah. Yeah. as people. Yeah. You spoke about representation, you know, and I, there's so much talk about representing when you're talking about a particular community. Is there representation on screen or off screen when you're telling their story? Do you have writers, researchers talking about them? And we see Trinetra has joined the cast and I think it's, it's great to do that, you know. Uh, so when you're telling stories about communities, do you think that it's imperative that you have someone from them if it's not on screen an off screen representation when you're telling stories about a particular community? Absolutely. Absolutely, because uh, uh, I mean, what is your intent in doing so? And uh, your intent in doing so is to expand the understanding of it. Uh, things that we were not privy to, things that people are not privy to. So you have to have, uh, you have to have them as part of that journey and share their experiences because only then can it be honest. Only then can it be real and only then can it be honestly uh, um, empathetic. Otherwise, you're just putting your projection onto something. So it's very much part of the process. Can I add to that? I feel uh, when you talk about representation, it also involves um, respecting the lived experience of the people that you're telling the stories because it should come from a place of education and empathy. You can't come from a patronizing gaze of, okay, uh, tell me two bits about your life and we'll make it happen. Or you read a book or two and that's it. No, you have to involve the people from the communities and you have to give them the credence and then learn from them and then put it forward. You know, of course, this question may not hold true as I can see the four of you sitting here. But last year, there was this um, a survey that was done that said, you know, there's only 10% across 25 top media houses in the country, entertainment and media houses, where the women representation is only 10%. I say it doesn't hold true because you're four of us right here. But you know, when you I'm see... I'm so happy to be the 10% <laughs> yes. right now. I'm so happy to be the minority. With these wonderful women. So when you're seeing things change from the times you guys started off, are you seeing a change when it comes to women representation on screen or on the sets? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, I remember um, talking about joining the industry 20 years ago, yeah. walking onto set as a third AD, and it was daunting because I just remember the ratio of crew. I'm just talking crew. Yeah. Um, you know, it was very little. You, you could see girls, maybe hair, makeup, wardrobe in that kind mm. of uh, thing. Um, and I mean, it's very different and it's beautiful. It's amazing yeah. to walk onto set. I think we have a long way to go. But. I don't feel that representation of women on screen could have changed without there being many more women behind the camera. I'm still like rooting for that 50-50. I feel there should be 50% representation of women behind the camera. And I feel when that changes, we don't even know what will actually change in front of the camera because for so many decades, even like forms of cinema, of storytelling, popular culture actually have really been defined, you know, defined and designed and really created by men. So I think it may not happen in our lifetimes when we we'll really see that uh, seismic kind of um, kind of shift. But I do feel that one cannot happen, the on-screen cannot happen without the change happening uh, uh, behind the camera. I think it's mindset. I myself calling myself a feminist, but uh, I was doing a commercial and usually I mandate, of course, that's a given. 50% uh, women have to be there and all those things. Uh, I don't work without that. But uh, at a point I was actually, uh, there were girls who were 15 year olds and for costumes, I spoke to the first city. I said, can I have a female costume person who can handle this better? 
And then she said, why do you think a guy can't do that? Instantly, it hit me that, you know, I also came with that bias, even though I claim to be. So, you know, we all men need to correct ourselves and think. Many says that I've seen is that usually there's token hiring. You know, the costume person will be the female. Okay. And an intern will be a female. But when it's 50 percent, you have to also see that you're also giving power positions to women. It can't be just like, okay, number. It has to be also be meaningful hiring. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. And good luck for the show. Thank Very you. excited Thank to you. watch this. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thanks. Thank you.